Hey everybody, welcome back to Chemistry, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the metric system, also known as the Système Internationale. So the metric system was actually devised in France during the French Revolution that occurred around 1790. In fact, one of the major people that developed it, uh, a man named Antoine Lavoisier, was later guillotined. Um, so that was very unfortunate. Um, anyway, what the metric system in France is called is called the System Internationale des Unites. And so we just call it the SI system for short. So back in 1790, what they decided to do is to define a meter as a base unit of length. And so they defined the meter as being exactly one ten millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole. Um, but now we don't really use that definition anymore. And so we ha have a preferred definition now that the length of a meter is equal to how far light travels in a certain small fraction of a second. So it's now defined that way. However, there are other base quantities, such as, for example, in addition to the meter, there is um, a base quantity for time, a base quantity for mass. Um, there have been standards set for these quantities as well. Um, I'm not going to talk about them. And so here's a kind of a fun picture of some portable standards for the meter and also the kilogram on the left, which are found in Paris. Okay, so what I want to do is review the base quantities that you'll be using a lot in chemistry. So there are seven base quantities, which you need to know about, and then they have units associated with them. So for example, for the base quantity of length, the unit associated with the so-called base unit is the meter and its symbol is M. The base quantity for mass, you might think it is the gram, it's actually not quite that, it's actually a kilogram. And so you may know already that kilograms is equal to a thousand grams. And so the symbol for the base unit of mass is kg. So one question you might ask is, well, why do they define the base unit of mass to be the kilogram? And I think perhaps the reason was is that most everyday objects are not so much measured in grams, but grams is a relatively small amount, but are measured in kilograms. And so that's what they decided to do. The base quantity of of time is measured in the unit of seconds. And then we have some other base quantities there. So for example, we're not going to go over electrical current in the first semester, but we may cover that in the second semester of chemistry. And so the base unit for that is the ampere. Importantly, we will spend a fair amount of time looking over the base quantity of temperature. And the base unit for temperature is a scale called the Kelvin scale, which I'll talk about maybe in the next presentation. Also, the base quantity of amount of substance, the unit for that is the mole. And importantly, the symbol for that is not M, because if you had a little M, you might think that it is a meter. So instead, the symbol for mole is MOL to distinguish it from M that is used for the meter. Also, there's a base quantity called luminous intensity, and we're not going to really talk about that, but I think for your test, you should memorize that the unit for that is the candela, and the symbol is CD. Just to note there that for mass, the base unit for mass is not the gram, but the kilogram, and it's abbreviated kg. So this is sort of the list of base units. However, one of the things you see is that Volume there is not part of the base quantities. And volume instead is something called a derived quantity. I'll talk about that in a bit. Now what I want to do is talk about the difference between mass and weight. So first let's consider mass. What mass is, it's the measure of the amount of matter that an object has. And importantly, when you're thinking about mass, you should realize that that amount of matter that that object has will be exactly the same no matter where you measure it. So let's say you had a brick, and let's say you found that on Earth, the brick had a mass of one kilogram because it has enough matter so that it has that mass of one kilogram. Well, if you took that brick out into the middle of outer space, it would still have a mass of one kilogram. If you took that brick to the moon, it would still have a mass of one kilogram. 
So what you can see is mass is a quantity that does not change no matter where you measure it. Now, one thing you should also know is that mass is typically measured in either grams or kilograms. Now, let's consider the difference between mass and weight. Weight is different. Weight is a measure of the force that an object applies to a surface. And this is different than mass. And so let me explain how it is different. When you're considering the weight of an object, it's going to depend on two things. It's going to depend on the mass of the object, and it's going to depend on the amount of gravity it's being applied on the object. So for example, let's say you have a brick, and it has a mass of one kilogram. And let's say you were to weigh it on Earth. Well, the weight is going to depend on the mass, which is one kilogram, and then it's also going to depend on the amount of gravity that is affecting that mass. And so what we'll do is set the level of gravity on Earth to be a constant. That constant is g, and we'll set the value of g to be 1.0. So the mass of the brick on Earth is one kilogram. The g-force on that brick is 1.0, so its weight is also 1.0 kilograms. So an unfortunate thing about weight is it's measured with the same units that mass is measured with. So that's something we have to live with. Now, let's say you took that brick with a mass of one kilogram and you took it to the moon and you weighed it on the moon. Would it have the same weight as it is on Earth? And the answer is no. And the reason is, is because on the moon, you have less gravity than you have on the Earth. So if you take that one kilogram brick to the moon, the level of gravity on the moon is about one sixth of that on the Earth. And so you would find that that one kilogram mass of brick on the moon would weigh not one kilogram, it would weigh a lot less. It would weigh about 0.16 kilograms. Um, so I just kind of mentioned that there. Okay, so here's sort of a fun example, at least for me, of the differences between mass and weight. So I have a mass of 90 kilograms, and so that's about 200 pounds. Now, wherever my mass is measured, it will always have the same value of 90 kilograms. It doesn't matter whether I'm on the Earth or on the Moon or on Jupiter. But the interesting thing is, my weight will change depending on where I measure it. And so if I have a mass of 90 kilograms on Earth, I will have a weight of 90 kilograms as well. But if I go to the moon, I have a mass of 90 kilograms, but my weight is going to be less. It's only going to be 15 kilograms. Now, if I go to Jupiter, which has a lot more gravity than the Earth, it's about 2.4 times more, my weight will be greater. It'll be 220 kilograms. Um, so what you can see there is that mass does not change wherever you measure it, but weight does depending on how much gravity that object is feeling. Okay, so next what I want to do is talk about something I've kind of mentioned a little bit before, which is volume. I had mentioned before that volume is not a base quantity. Um, volume is a derived quantity, so let me talk about why that is the case. So let's say we have our brick again, and let's say we would want to measure its volume. How would we do that? Well, we might get a meter stick and measure its length, and we would measure it in meters, which is a base quantity. And then we would, might find the width of the brick and the height of the brick. And so what you would do to find the volume, as you know, is you take the length times the width times the height. So if it's a meter stick, you're measuring in the base units of meters. It would be base unit of meter times a base unit of meter times a base unit of meter. And so the value you get will be meters cubed. So meters cubed is no longer a base unit because meters cubed is not a meter. Meters cubed was derived from multiplying the base unit three times. Therefore, it's no longer a base unit. It is a derived unit. So just kind of remember that volume is a derived unit. Um, its SI units are meters cubed, and its symbol is meters cubed. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is you can take any kind of length unit, and if you cube it, that becomes a volume unit. 
So let me give you an example of that. So let's say you have some kind of object, um, and let's say its length is a centimeter. So if it's a box, and each of the dimensions is a centimeter, you multiply a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter, and then you would have, for the volume of that box, centimeters cubed. So you can see in that case, when we took a unit like centimeters and we cubed it, we get a new unit, which is the volume units. And so you can take any kind of length unit, and if you cube it, that should give you volume units. So the SI unit for volume is the cubic meter. However, we commonly measure solid volumes in cubic centimeters. And so the reason is a cubic meter is extremely large volume. It's like the volume of an extremely large box. And so in the lab, we typically don't work with extreme large volumes like that. We work with smaller volumes. And so those smaller volumes, the units we tag to that are usually centimeters cubed. And so just to note, that a centimeters cubed is only a very small fraction of a meter cubed. A centimeters cubed is like a millionth of a meter cubed, so it's a relatively small volume. Um, now, in chemistry, another system we like to use to describe volume is liters. And so this is considered actually to be a non-SI unit. So what we need to somehow do is connect the liter world to the centimeters cubed or meters cubed world of the SI units. And so follow me here a little bit. So we have one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. And so milliliter you'll learn about later is a thousandth of a liter. And so again, you have a thousand milliliters is needed to fill up one liter. Now it has been defined that one milliliter is equal to one cm cubed. So that would mean, for example, that 1,000 milliliters is equal to 1,000 cm cubed. Okay, so how do we get that? Well, there's another way you can think about that. So think about one cm cubed, and that's gonna be a small area of volume about the size of a sugar cube. And so that is one centimeter cubed. Now, if we take 1,000 of those, then we have 1,000 centimeters cubed and we've defined one centimeter cubed to be equal to one milliliter. So if you have a thousand of those centimeters cubed, you will have a thousand of milliliters. And so that will be a total volume of one liter. So one liter is basically a one centimeter cubed where you have 10 of them going out in length, 10 of them going out in width, and 10 of them going out in height to produce a thousand cm cubed, which is one liter. So one thing I would like you to do, and this is very important, is to memorize that one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. That is extremely important, and we'll apply this in a lot of problems later. So thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you later.